Gretchen Men, and welcome to this collaboration I'm doing with Breed Love Guitars, where I show you how I play the Led Zeppelin song, Going to California. I had the obvious excuse to learn the song because I play in Zapparella, but I think it's worthwhile to learn from great musicians for any reason. It's a great way to expand your musical vocabulary and to introduce yourself to new techniques. Part three of a series I'm doing with Breed Love Guitars on an introduction to finger picking. Part one, which we'll link below, covers some basics of hand position, tone, developing finger independence, and walks you through a number of exercises intended to give you a foundation for some of the patterns used in this tune. I really encourage you to first check that out and work through the exercises as they will really expedite your learning process. Even if you're a more experienced player, periodically reviewing fundamentals is always helpful. So for anyone and everyone joining me here, it is an honor and a privilege to share this music with you. I hope this video will be helpful, and I wish you all the patience and all of the tenacity to take the time to learn and really internalize this beautiful piece of music. So before we get started, let me introduce you to this beautiful guitar. It is a Breedlove Discovery S Concertina with Western Red Cedar top and African mahogany back and sides. Breedlove instruments are excellent for finger picking. To be sure, they sound great with the pick as well, but they're really responsive to the gentler touch of the fingers. This one has a 25 inch scale, and it's a very compact body, so it's very friendly for travel, it's very comfortable to play, and it has really lovely defined trebles and lots of projection. I'll be using the traditional way of referring both to the fretting hand and picking hand fingers and fingerings. So what that means is for the fretting hand, it'll be first, second, third, and fourth finger. And for the picking hand, it'll be P for thumb, I for index, M for middle, and A for ring. I'll be going through each section in this format, demonstrating it slowly, then breaking it down for you once while also having the notation and tablature on the screen for each section, and then demonstrating it closer to at tempo. This means we'll be moving quickly without a lot of built-in repetition. That'll help keep this video to like a reasonable length, but you can and should repeat sections and even slow down the YouTube playback speed as necessary for your individual learning process. So the tuning of going to California is, it's an alternate tuning, and it's double drop D. So all that is is tuning your low E string and your high E string down a full step. So get in tune, D, A, D, G, B, D, and join me when you're in tune. Keep in mind that even high quality instruments require a little bit of time to settle into a new tuning, so I recommend going slightly flat of the note and then tuning back up, and expect to retune a couple of times. I encourage you to start working on any new song with active listening. That means doing more than simply enjoying the piece. Active listening requires analyzing what you're hearing, listening to identify sections, structures, and areas that might be difficult to learn. If you have the music well in your ears and in your brain, it'll be much easier to learn. Then I suggest making a simple structured chart. This is a plain language description of the sections of the tune and requires no music theory. Here's how I'd do one for going to California. How I play the song is a little bit of a departure from how I usually approach Jimmy Page's parts. I typically try to be really, really faithful to the recordings. And then I'll add like little elements here and there from live performances, and I really try to keep any improvisations solidly within the Led Zeppelin universe. The studio version of this particular song has layers of guitars, which presents a challenge in determining how to go about playing it on one guitar. One approach would be to pick out and learn a single guitar track, which yields the further transcription challenge of deciphering individual parts when they overlap and intertwine and have similar tones, and then also selecting which part is most essential. Or one could approximate the multiple layers and pick out the parts most apparent in any given moment, which leads to a lot of variations throughout or you could analyze what Jimmy did on various live versions. I settled on a bit of a combination. I decided to stick to clear parts because this is primarily a song about the vocals. My role here is to support the story, not step on it, or get in the way with too much variation. 
I'm the sole support for the vocal and mandolin, and I wanted to give my bandmates a solid foundation. What I'm going to show you here in this video is my own adaptation, definitely based around some Jimmy Page study and lots of listening, but it's what I settled on that I thought was going to help translate the song best in the live environment. Now if your goal is to learn the various guitar parts exactly as recorded, this isn't really what I'm doing here, but it still might give you a good head start. So if that is what your goal is, I would say we could start here, you can get some of the basics together, and then just start making additions and adjustments based on what you hear and the parts that you want to be playing. So here's a preparatory exercise. This song is so much about the picking hand, and specifically this style of picking called Travis picking. It involves a moving thumb to get different bass notes. And while we can't do a deep dive into it here, I can give you at least one exercise to get you going so you can start feeling what it is like to be skipping around between bass strings. You can just kind of mute everything with your left hand. Um, and we're just going to focus on this right hand movement. So what it's going to be is P and A, so talking right hand fingers here, on the uh, outer strings, M on the B string, P and I on the G and D strings, A on the highest string, P on the A string, and then M on the B string, and P and I on the G and D strings. Introduction is the easiest part. It's all open strings, specifically all Ds. Low D with P, high D with A, middle D with P, high D with A, low D with P, high D with A, and then middle D with P. So it's just. It's all just alternating bass notes and then this highest note, so. So what that is, is the lowest and highest strings at the 5th fret with your 2nd and 3rd fingers of your fretting hand, and P and A of your picking hand. And then the open B string with M, open D and G string simultaneously with P and I. Then the top string you're going to go down to the 4th fret, and then hit that with A. And then the lowest string at the 5th fret with P again, open B string with M, open middle G and D strings simultaneously with P and I open highest string with A, lowest string at the 5th fret with P, then B string with a 3rd finger, 5th fret, and M, open middle D and G string simultaneously with P and I, and then the highest string with A, lowest string at the 5th fret with P, B string again with the 3rd finger, 5th fret, and M, and then again open middle G and D strings simultaneously with P and I, and open highest string with A. So again. the seventh fret of the G string and your first finger on the fifth fret of the B string and then you're going to hit those with M and I in the open lowest string with P and then you're going to hammer on to the B string on the seventh fret with your fourth finger and then you're going to hit the open D with your uh, with your thumb with P 
Um, and then the G and B strings at the seventh fret, um, fretting them with the three and four and with a P, I, and M. So. And then you're gonna lift your fourth finger and the G and the B strings at the seventh and fifth frets with I and N. So. And then the lowest string with P, the B string at the fifth fret with M, and then hammer on again to the seventh fret with your fourth finger while hitting this time the open D with the P, and then the open highest string with A, then the open lowest string with P, and again hammer on to the seventh fret with your fourth finger while hitting the open D string with P. And then you're gonna hit the open lowest string with P, the G string at the seventh fret with your third finger, and you're gonna bar the top two strings with your first finger, I, M, and A and hammer onto the B string from the fifth to the seventh fret. And then the open D string with the G and B strings at the seventh fret, so. And then the G string at the seventh fret and the top two strings barred at the fifth, and that's with I, M, and A. Open lowest string with P, G string, seventh fret with the third finger, B string, fifth fret, and first finger, and the top string, seventh fret, the fourth finger. Then open D string with P, G and B strings at the seventh fret, open lowest string with P, and hammer on to the seventh fret with your fourth finger while hitting that open D string with P, then the open highest string with A, then again hammer on to that seventh fret with your fourth finger while hitting the open D string with P. So we're going to be using this chord shape. It's a little bit of a stretch, but you're not there for very long. So fourth finger on the seventh fret of the G string, second finger on the fifth fret of the B string, and then the first finger on the third fret of that highest string. And then the right hand pattern, it's going to be that same picking pattern, that Travis picking pattern, that little introductory exercise, but the first bass note's going to be on the A string. P and A simultaneously on the open A string and the highest string, M on the B string, P on the open D and I on the G string simultaneously. Then the highest string again with A, the open A string with P, the B string with M, and then the open D and G strings with P and I. So. Then we're gonna move to this chord shape. So on the A string, the second fret with your first finger, then you're gonna have the open D string, open G string, B string with the third finger, the third fret, and the open highest string. And then we'll apply that same right hand pattern. P and A, M, I. And then when we get back to A, we're gonna now fret the top string at the second fret and pull off to the open string right when the bass note hits. So that's gonna be the lowest string with P and then the open D with P and the B and the G strings at the seventh fret with the second and third fingers and I and M, so. And then lowest string with P, G and B strings at the seventh fret again with I and M, and then the open D string with P, so. And then you're gonna do the open, low, that open lowest string, and then you're gonna have G string at the sixth fret with your first finger, B string at the seventh fret with your third finger, I and M, and then you're gonna hammer on the G string to the seventh fret with your second finger, so. And then you're gonna hit all those three strings together with P, I, and M, so. And then you're gonna hit the G string at the seventh fret, B string at the eighth fret with your fourth finger and open highest string with the I, M, and A, and then lowest string open with P, B string seventh fret with M, open D string and G string at the seventh fret with P and I. So.
stitch, it's going to be almost exclusively that same picking pattern we've been working on with only one added note. So the first chord is going to be here um, in the fifth position, and it's going to be the open G, uh, D string, the G string at the seventh fret with the third finger, the B string at the sixth fret with the second finger, and the high string going back and forth between the seventh fret and the fifth fret. So using the fourth finger and the first finger respectively. And the only tiny added detail is the last note of the measure is on the B string with M. And then the second chord is the open A string, the second fret of the D string with the first finger, the open G string, the B string, the second fret with the second finger and the open top string. And then there's a variation in the picking pattern. We start with only the lowest note, open A with P, open G with I, the D and the B strings at the second fret with P and F, highest string with A, and then that's again just going through the pattern. So P, I, So for the outro, I go back to that really simple pattern of the intro, just with those open D strings, maybe about eight cycles. A lot of times I just wait and kind of feel it with the vocal. And then I add a little variation that is something that I, I heard in the recording. The lowest string with P, the highest string with A, the middle string with P, and the G string at the seventh fret with your third finger, the B string at the fifth fret with your first finger, and a quick hammer on to the seventh fret with your fourth finger. M and I, then the G and B strings at the 7th and 5th fret, respectively, with I and M, and then the lowest string with P, the highest string with A, the middle string with P, the highest string with A. So at full tempo. And then the very last bit, I just kind of do as a fade out. Just getting quieter, quieter. Take your time and stay patient with yourself. Practice slowly and deliberately because quickness and fluency will come naturally if your process is good. Use a metronome to keep you honest. Rehearse this a lot with your singer if you're gonna be playing it live. You wanna be able to play solidly and supportively so your singer can translate the story to the audience without worrying if the floor is gonna fall out from under them. Coordinate tempo and dynamics with your singer so that it sits best with their voice and how they wanna interpret the lyrics. Paying attention to these details helps imbue the music with breath and vitality and ensures you and your singer are playing the song as not as would-be page and plant clones, but as musicians delivering a gorgeous piece of music with both respect and care. This video has various chapters for easy reference so you can skip between parts and linger on ones that are more difficult. Once you have each section down, start putting them together and build the whole picture from the smaller parts. Work on the transitions between sections too so that things flow gracefully, not just within sections. Thank you so much for joining me here. I really hope this video might have been helpful to you. If so, like, comment, share, subscribe. Keep supporting videos that offer free content to other fellow musicians. I'll be doing more of these videos with Breed Love in the coming months, so keep an eye out and leave a comment if there's something in particular you'd really like me to cover in an upcoming video. As always, I wish you the very best on this endless and beautiful path of music.